And welcome back to the final segment or section or track is if you were, if we're using the event lingo of API days, well, 2021. I hope you'll look and sign up your interest for the next year. It's going to be hopefully fun, hopefully a better year. We have to work together to make that happen. But that's what APIs are about. It's about helping us all work together, whether it's business or tech or usually both. So I want to bring Robert and Luis to the stage to introduce themselves. And you are talking about proving API value through monetization. Those in the audience, step it up. Keep up that energy. It's hard to be talking online all the time. You know, I can shoot, talk out my ass all, all I want, but for everyone else, it's hard for them to not have this audience feedback. So provide that feedback for them. Have a great time. Um, let's see your slides. If Luis, you want to share. And how are you both doing today? Doing well, doing well. Fantastic. Awesome. That's what we like to hear. And the sun came out in London, which is a miracle unto itself. So maybe if y'all are on our part of the world, you should take this one for a walk. Okay. I'll let you take to take it over. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, welcome to the session on API management. Um, we're gonna talk about how teams can realize the value of their APIs through monetization. My name is Robert Wunderlich. I'm a product manager with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and my focus is on cloud native and API management. Joining me is Luis Weir and he's leading the way in modernizing the technology to drive hospitality through integration and APIs. Our agenda today is simple. I'll kick us off with a short update, how we are reimagining the capabilities of usage plans and the broader scope of subscription management. Lewis will then take the baton to discuss the, in a live use case how he is using monetization today in his organization and his ideas going forward. So let's jump right in. So let's talk about usage plans and subscription management and what does that mean? So oftentimes when we think of monetization, we think of a usage plan and a simple model. And this is good for customers who want to be able to throttle access. They may, but we wanna extend this to add billing and payments. A single billing model may work for a solo API developer within a limited geographical domain. But what about enterprise customers that are looking to add uh, another revenue channel to an already broad portfolio of products that they already have? And what about global reach? How does the customer handle complex contracts with other enterprises and billing in a global scale? This requires a more robust subscription management. So to achieve this, we implement usage plans and we link them to subscription management to help API teams realize the value of their APIs. We have usage plans in our API management offering today, but we're reimagining the capabilities in our next generation platform. Before we get into those capabilities, let's take a look at the architecture. Our policy enforcement in the API gateway manages the incoming requests and applying policies. And one of those is the usage plan, which can throttle based on the client. The gateway is a serverless device attached to your virtual cloud network, which can be used to control access to APIs implemented in any technology. For example, robust containerized applications running in Oracle Kubernetes engine or serverless functions or code running on compute or even low code solutions. API Gateway will integrate with subscription management, providing customers with a robust solution that will not only manage traffic at runtime, but handle the API consumer contracts, ranging from the very simple to the most complex enterprise level. The API Gateway will be able to define the policy enforcements based on the subscription, as well as report metrics to the billing engine in subscription management. So let's take a look at subscription management. This is very complex in the pricing and there's many iterations and bills can be hard to generate and to get out the door quickly. Payments being handled on a recurring basis and revenue recognition and compliance with ASC 606 and IFRS 15 can make finance teams feel like they are playing with fire. Supporting a complete customer lifecycle may require reworking of internal systems and processes. This goes way beyond the simple usage plan. So in the ERP for billing, renewal cycles, and revenue recognition and compliance, and also for the customer facing, your API consumers, how are they interacting? 
that plays a big role in the entire process as a subscription management solution. So what we have are two subscription management solutions, Oracle Subscription Management for Enterprise and NetSuite Suite Billing for Small and Medium-Sized Business. Our subscription management handles the complete lifecycle, including a billing engine, usage and consumption, contracts, and service products. With subscription management, our executive leadership can have a complete view of the value provided through APIs within a unified platform. And so this is, can be used to retain and renew customers. An API product manager will gain a deeper understanding of the API portfolio and the API consumers. Imagine a business that sells multiple products and services who decides to monetize their APIs. Rather than placing their APIs on an island, their value can be reflected at an enterprise level with a full 360 degree view. Now, let's talk about Oracle Hospitality. I'm excited to have Luis Weir joining me. He is leading the way in the hospitality industry, modernizing through integration and API management. API integration perspective. Today, I'm going to talk about how we are using your platform, right? The underlying technology that you're making available to us to deliver great API integration experiences to the hospitality industry. Um, I come from the consulting uh, world. I joined Oracle about three years back, and since then, I've been living and breathing hospitality. Uh, all my experiences delivering large API strategies are written in my book. So if you're interested, uh, please go ahead and, and you can find it on Amazon or whatever. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar with Oracle Hospitality, let me just give you a very quick overview. Um, we offer a complete suite of products aimed at helping businesses in the hospitality industry, such as hotel, cruises, um, and, and even restaurant within the hotel leverage cloud technologies to streamline operations and elevate the guest experience. Ultimately, it's all about this. Uh, our, pro our flagship product is called Opera, uh, Opera PMS. Um, and with Opera, we manage about 40,000 properties worldwide across 190 countries. Uh, all the major brands are, are uh, using our software. We are the leader, especially in the upscale market, but we, we expand you know, horizontally across all the different markets uh, uh, from, from you know, four or five star hotels to independents. Um, or strength our local presence, several years of experience, uh, especially especially in local and local uh, local and fiscal uh, legal requirements. And again, a very, very large footprint. We manage about four to five million rooms worldwide. Just so you get an idea as to what we do, um, I think this diagram illustrates well uh, uh, what services and technologies we offer. Uh, from the moment that you walk into the hotel and you check in at the front desk or you do it through your phone, uh, to the moment you go to the restaurant and, and pay your bill, uh, to you know how that information that's available to the hotel uh, gets distributed to different channels like Booking.com and Expedia, and how do we enable the vendor co community, like the hospitality vendors that are are, 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 are adding value to host customers, uh, integrate, right? That's all covered within our product. However, today, I'm going to be talking about the, uh, my baby. Uh, Oracle Hospitality in the integration platform. Uh, the Oracle Hospitality integration platform, we actually call it OHIP for short, um, was actually created from scratch to be a cloud native application. It's our next generation solution that pretty much consolidates, uh, centralizes, and streamlines all of our interface capabilities into a single and unified platform. In the past, it wasn't like that. If you attended my session before, you would have seen that our legacy processes for integration were quite complicated and, and expensive actually for vendors and customers. So what we're doing here really is lowering down dramatically the entry barrier for integration. So startups and, start, and established vendors alike, they can all join the platform and really benefit from the over 3000 REST API capabilities that we have made available. We've also documented about 2000 public postman collections. So you can see recipes and do stuff like digital check-in and check-out, uh, upsell, um, uh, housekeeping, uh, so you can align to the latest uh, cleanliness standards, uh, and et cetera. Uh, the business model is also super straightforward, and this is really where I'm going to be talking more about today, how do we enable that? And that's because we flipped the model on its head. In the past, the customer, and I mean the hotel customer, had to pay a license for the integration so a vendor could actually connect to, to their property system which, which you know, uh, uh, ended up in very high cost for the customer itself. What we've done now is flip the model on its head. The customer gets unlimited integrations, 
for internal use cases, and the vendor just pay per call, and we charge in bundles of 10,000 calls, $10. I'm gonna explain that in more details in a second. But what are the building blocks that make this platform available? And this is especially important for this talk because Robert was covering what do we have available within OCI? So what I'm doing here really is bringing to life that technology that he just covered and the capabilities that are available within OCI to solve a real product that we've made available to the hospitality industry and that's really changing the game. So let me just, uh, uh, I'm not gonna, I don't have the time to go, uh, uh, to go through all the blocks in detail, but I am gonna drill down into some of the key components that I find that you're gonna you know, uh, be interested on given the purpose of this presentation. So let me start perhaps with the more obvious ones. Um, we naturally run our own cloud, uh, OCI, and ha that has a lot of benefits. Uh, we leverage uh, our, our own uh, OCI API management capability that Robert was talking about earlier. Uh, our developer experience is actually built on top of our API management control plane APIs. And we are using our own uh, our JavaScript technology called Oracle Jet to build the developer portal experience. For microservices, we use uh, a Helidon, which is our microservice framework. Uh, and everything is deployed, uh, deployed as a cloud native solution within the Oracle Kubernetes engine. So it's a cloud native solution leveraging really the cloud native uh, developer tools that OCI makes available for us uh, uh, within, within the business unit I work on in Oracle. In addition, our API gateway, we're currently deployed in three different regions globally, North America, Europe, and JPEG. Um, we have actually are running about 200 gateway instances right now concurrently, and we're handling several millions of calls a month, enabling key hotel brands to actually run the hotel operations and deliver amazing guest experiences, all API-led, meaning that the API truly becomes an absolutely critical component of the hotel operations. It cannot go down full stop. And then the monetization part is actually implemented by taking advantage of our Kafka-like streaming service, which then is fully integrated with our billing module. And that's how we're able to keep track of you know, who you are, who the caller is. Is it a vendor? And therefore, we need to monetize based on calls. Or is it an internal customer use case? Like, for example, a hotel brand like a Hilton or like Amelia uh, delivering a use case that's included within their purchase of the Opera Club PMS. All of these are, are super critical capabilities, but they are not the only ones that you really need in able to successfully monetize on APIs. So let me just continue the journey. Uh, the partner marketplace. This is super, super important. In hospitality, we enable ecosystems. That's really what it's all about. Is having the ability to let vendors uh, such as you know the OTAs, the big OTAs that you probably know about, like Booking.com or Expedia, but also the Googles and Kayaks, uh, we call them meetups, right? That 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 give you the availability, but then you redirect you to a different site, you complete the booking. To the independent software vendors that uh, deliver solutions such as contactless applications or revenue management uh, uh, or communications, right? So you can interact with a hotel during your guest journey. Uh, through WhatsApp, for example, or or Facebook chat, or or whatever, right? Uh, all of this is actually, you know, consumers of our APIs, and the marketplace is actually enabling these consumers to be visible to our customer audience. That's really what the not only what the vendors want; they want to be visible. They want to build this in API integration so they can then sell their products to our customers. But also, the customers want to know which vendors are available in our ecosystem so they can accelerate innovation, especially now during COVID times, uh, contactless became the norm and hotels in order to adapt, they truly have to uh, modernize uh, and transform the, their guest experiences. Contactless is absolutely crucial, but it's not the only process that's been digitalized, even internal hotel operations is being digitalized to a super fast pace. And that's actually what we enable through the marketplace. So a hotel or a hotelier, can go to the marketplace, they can find an innovation and purchase it. And because of the business model we have, that's actually not an additional license they have to incur. It's just part of their core property management system license. And just so you get an idea on how this is going, uh, OHIP is one year old. It's a baby. But that baby is growing extremely fast. Uh, in just uh, over a year, we've onboarded 300 uh, uh, partners. Um, that actually translates to about one new partner every single business day. We've also created a Slack community where we interact with our, with our partners and we enable them to complete their integration super quick. And we want them to complete because 
We monetize on those APIs, right? But we only monetize truly when they get connected to a hotel customer. And therefore we win when our vendor community wins, which is, which is a win-win-win model that I spoke about earlier this morning in my first presentation. Uh, of all these 300, about 30% have completed and the vast majority are already connected customers. And the feedback we're getting from this vendor community is actually fascinating. Some actually think that that's the best experience they had with Oracle so far. And it's really all about engagement. It's about making the vendors feel that we care, treating them as real customers that they now are, right? And that model is completely changed, uh, uh, or we flip the old model to this new model through the introduction of this uh, platform and all the capabilities, capabilities that I'm walking through right now. But let me continue on the journey of capabilities. Developer portal. It's all good to have about 3,000 API capabilities, but even though that you know this is you know super good, it can feel like finding a needle in a haystack. How do you find the right capability for the right use case? So what we've done, and, and by the way, just to be transparent, uh, what you see on the screen right now is what we're going to be releasing in January. Uh, 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 it's not exactly what we have available now, but, but it's dev complete. Um, we are moving into a capability-centric developer portal experience. It's not only about the API, sure. You want to know that we have a reservation API. You want to know that we have an inventory API. You want to know that we have a front office API. But we want to make it easier for you to find exactly the right capability for your use case. So basically, being able to do searches at operation level, being able to find a pre-built defined workflow. What do I mean by workflow? I mean, we've already documented the end-to-end contact-like experience. What are the API handshakes you need in order to be able to search availability, do a, a pre-check-in, check-in, uh, uh, and check out all through your phone? All of that, you can, you're going to be able to find through the developer portal. And all we're aiming at is a speed to market, being able to make it easier for vendors and customers alike to find the capabilities needed in order to deliver and satisfy the, the, the use cases on which these APIs are being used for. Carrying on. Uh, and, and this is probably the heart of this presentation is the API management capabilities, especially around billing. Um, billing is tricky, actually. Uh, API monetization, I feel, remains one of those areas where enterprises in general perhaps haven't been able to, to release that mainstream. Like, obviously, you know, you have internal APIs, that's, that's not news. You have public APIs. But I would say of, you know, all the organizations out there that are already having public APIs, monetization, it's not, it's not yet you, you know, the common denominator. It's an area that's, that's, you know, that's evolving quite fast. And that's why it's important to understand how do you enable monetization, what is the use case, and what business benefits do you get on the back of that monetization, and what is the product you're selling to your API customer? So you know, regardless whether you're an open API for the general, general public or you're an API for, for the partner community, let me just uh, uh, fast forward this a little bit. What's important to understand is what is the monetization model that you're looking for? How are you planning to, to monetize on those APIs? What is that business model that you're looking for? Because that's actually going to drive the capabilities of your platform in order to accomplish that goal. So uh, in our case, in OHIP, we actually support two models today. The first one is uh, free or included. Actually, it's included in a, a more than free in our case. Uh, and that's because a customer has to purchase Opera Cloud Foundation, the Opera Cloud PMS. And on the back of purchasing Opera Cloud PMS, then they have limited access to consumer APIs for internal use cases. OK? Um, but if you are a software vendor, someone that's selling software to the hotel, basically, the software vendor and us as an API provider, has a, ha, we have a common goal, which is that hotel customer. Uh, we charge them per call. It's a pay-as-you-go model. However, we charge them in bundles. And this is another important thing to understand when you're defining your API monetization strategy. It's not just a subscription, but what does subscription entails? In our case, it entails that when you make 10,000 calls, we charge $10. So it doesn't matter if you make one or 999 calls or 9,999 calls, we still charge $10. But if you go over that threshold, let's say you make 1,000, sorry, 10,001 calls that month, then we're going to charge you $20. So that pay-as-you-go uh, API monetization strategy based on API bundles is absolutely crucial for a business model. And that was not an accident. That was deliberate. 
It was on that way based on our APS study when we when we did market analysis to understand what is the best way to offer an API product that's affordable for our vendors of any size, whether you're, you're a startup or you're an established vendor, we want you to be able to use this platform and win. And when the vendor wins, we win. And also the hotel customer wins because they're getting value from, from, from the tree. Of course, there are many different monetization models. I'm just talking about the ones that we're adopting and that the OPI API management capability is made available for us. And I think this is a really good segue for Robert Wunderlich to just come back on stage and, and tell you, tell us how, you know, what are the capabilities available and how that's helping, you know, specifically in my case, you know, deliver business value. Robert, if you Thanks, may. Luis. Thanks, Luis. So you probably figured by now that I'm building the uh, API infrastructure and Luis is my customer. Uh, and he's definitely driving a lot of really great requirements and helping us uh, reimagine the next generation. So today we like other providers, we have the uh, support for usage plans, which the API developers can use. They can define a, you know, a client token via query or header, uh, and they can go ahead and manage those requests. And that's what you know, Lewis is doing today. Uh, he's integrating with billing systems on the back end, but he's doing that with a fair amount of manual effort. He's uh, logging um, and going to a billing aggregator to kind of you know, make that happen. So in the new service, we are reimagining usage plans. First, we want to give the API developer complete freedom to choose the source of the client identifier. So what do I mean by that? In most systems, you're locked into a query or a header, maybe like an X API key. We want to be able to expand that where you can use elements of the auth context or even things like the uh, path parameter. So the API developer can define that in their API design, what part of the request will be used at runtime to identify the client who is calling the API. The API consumers, as they use this and they set up their subscriber token, we determine that they need to be able to have multiple tokens for one subscription. This helps if they wanna be able to track multiple applications types like iOS or Android and how those are performing, but also when rotating their token. So if they determine that they wanna change a token, they don't have to go and interrupt the uh, ability for the existing token to be able to uh, be used. So that we wanna be able to have that. The simple API monetization systems that are there today, they may work for individual developers or small teams, but enterprises, they need to unify their API product among a vast portfolio of products and services that they offer. And they also need to be able to recognize the revenue across multiple geographies while having an API monetization platform that integrates within the broader subscription management and revenue recognition uh, is essential. So the existing usage plans can you know, handle a fairly complex requirements, but sometimes even a, a customer will have more complex decision requirements that forces them to try to adapt the data model uh, to their API management service. And we wanna open that up for the customer. So in the next generation, API developers can either use the built-in usage plan capabilities or completely offload that to an external subscription and decision management service where the API gateway will just act as the policy enforcement uh, point and return the metrics to that service. This could reduce or even eliminate the need to translate the subscriptions and usage plans, providing the API teams with complete flexibility to design their monetization to match their business. Luis, back to you. But you said it's extremely important, and I just want to be transparent that, that those capabilities are going to accelerate uh, or you know, or speed to deliver features to market because we don't have to do things, you know, ourselves within, you know, the Oracle Hospitality Business Unit that, that we're using, you know, uh, Robert's uh, capabilities. And at the end of the day, it's all about functionality. It's what we bring to the industry that matters most. And that's how I want to conclude uh, my, my case study. It's just showing you one of the use cases that we're enabling through this platform. From the moment that you book or connect with a guest to collect guest data and be able to support that guest through the journey so the guests can pick the room to checking in and getting the digital key to then go to the room, to uh, walk to the room and, and, and open the, uh, the room with, with, your, with your phone to making payments and then checking out. All of that is being enabled through a platform today and that wouldn't be possible without the underlying infrastructure that OCI gives to us and that Robert you know, uh, uh, is making available to us and, and that's only gonna improve in the future. And that's how I wanna conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you both so much. I think that was a lot of information again. So Luis, you're setting a pattern and a reputation.
but <laughs> I think um, people will be very excited to get the slides later. Oh, what does that say behind us? I don't know. Oh, we had like something exciting for a moment there and vibrant and colorful. Well, that's what we need color. Uh, I'm going to send you two off and bring on the next person onto the stage.